Hey, Sean Jantz here, and I'm going to do a quick battle plan for Tuesday, October 4th. And I'm going to do it on Slash ES, which is the S&P 500, and Slash TF, uh, which is the Small Cap 2000. I'm going to start here on Slash ES, and every single evening I always start on the 4-hour chart. The 4-hour chart is what I call the anchor chart, and it's the most important chart to understand what is our bias on this 4-hour chart, right? This is what I call taking a bird's eye view of the market. Let's take a step back. Let's see this chart in a bigger picture. So that way when we, we can use all the information from the four hour chart and dial down into our smaller time frames to time our entries. And so when we look at this four hour chart, it's clear, right? I mean, we are literally smack dab in the middle. We couldn't be more in the middle of price action. So we're not bullish, we're not bearish, we're not oversold, we're not overbought. We can be a bull and or a bear tomorrow. All we have to do is wait for strength. And you can pretty much see where this chart wants to go. It's not that difficult to see, right? I mean, we got a high right up here. We'll write that number down, 65 to 67. And then you can clearly see the low. Um, it's really easy to see back down here at the lows. We'll write that number down. 43 to 41. So you can see we can go either way tomorrow. All we got to do is wait for strength. And so now we move to our clean 15 day, 15 minute plot chart, right? We don't need no indicators for this. Um, we're just looking for the best edges. Where's the best place to buy, the best place to sell? Where is the edges? Where's the volume? Where's the um, consolidations? And where's our magnet levels? That's what we're looking for here. So at the upside, you can clearly see we have some decent structure from here to here, right? I mean, it's not super clear cut, but the other thing that we have up here, and you can kind of see that I have drawn a little bit of a trend line here, which can also eat us right there at that level. I mean, we got so much going on there. Friday's POC, Monday's POC, Thursday's POC, plus 0.5 deviation. Um, Resistance to the left, resistance to the left. We had some consolidation to the left, and then uh, we got the trend line. I mean, we got so much stuff going on, and to top it off, the number I wrote up to the upside, I did write down 65. So I wrote down 65 to 67, which is pretty darn close. And so we got so much stuff going on up there to the upside that I'm loving it. Back down to the downside, we'll have value area low right there that you can see that. But then the best structure, as you can see right here, right? So structure, 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 breakout. We got volume, volume, support, support, right? It didn't quite touch right there, but that has now turned into our minus 0.5. And then I have this longer term trend line right there that will aid us for that minus 0.5 deviation tomorrow for potential. We can use that as profit targets to the downside and we can also use it as a buy trigger. And the number I wrote down to the downside, guess what? I wrote down 43 to 41. So we got great stuff up here. We got fantastic stuff down there. It's gonna be a killer day. And then of course, to finish it off, back up, we do have the plus one deviation, which was gonna put us back to 15 day highs. And then our minus one deviation, which we do, if you can see to the left, we have a quite a bit of structure on this uh, level as well. So we can potentially use that minus one deviation as well. I mean, we will be able to use everything. Anywhere this chart goes tomorrow, we know exactly what it wants to do. It's going to be a fantastic day. Let's first talk about if this chart does go higher. Now we'll start showing you visually what to do, how to do it, or what I'm going to be looking for at least. And then you take what you like, take what you don't like. So we'll talk about if this chart goes higher. The simple thing, uh, the first thing we are kind of here at value area high is to let this retrace and look for sell value area high triggers. It's kind of already there right now as we speak. So that is kind of why I drew like come down and then retrace up at BA high. Okay. The second thing is right here is going to be my line in the sand to try and take this chart higher. Remember when our four hour chart, we're in the middle on the four hour chart as well. And so now what we need to do is wait for strength. And so how do we find strength? There's our line in the sand on the upside. We let price get up above and then we find higher lows. 
So higher lows on the one minute chart, one minute chart, and we can spread right inside these POCs. We can also spread up inside this range high, which is, and the plus 0.5 deviation. Here's the issue that I'm gonna have going higher. Well, potentially, I'm absolutely gonna take profit right there. Sorry about that. I'm absolutely gonna take profit on those two POCs because here's the deal. These POCs could absolutely potentially see sell triggers right there at those POCs. And then the second place to sell is right there on plus 0.5 deviation and that, that little trend line that I drew, okay? And so now if price gets up above that, holds pullback, we continue higher lows, higher lows, potentially buy this all the way up to the plus one deviation tomorrow. I don't see that happening, but it absolutely could. Now let's talk about if this chart goes lower. I wanna zoom in a little bit more so we can kind of see this a little bit more visually. We will have an opportunity for an 80% rule to the downside. But the first thing we'd have to do though is we first gotta get through set, then I find my lower highs. So lower highs, lower highs, and then I can look for the 80% rule uh, to the downside and then take your profits the second it touches value area low. Once we touch value area low, I definitely can look for my quick buy triggers off of VA low, but the number that we really found tomorrow is that 43 to 41. So there's gonna be my line in the sand for bears. There's my second line in the sand. My first one is set. My second one is right there. Okay, so here's my second line in the sand. Get through value rate low, then we find lower highs. Lower highs, lower highs. Look to enter either at the money or spreads, and then look to spread this down to minus 0.5 deviation, spread it down to the trend line, and then take our profits right there. Once we touch the minus 0.5 deviation, I can look for my higher low buy triggers off of the minus 0.5. And same thing as if we went to up to, up to same thing as plus one. We do have we do have structure on the minus one deviation. So if price breaks through, continues lower highs, lower highs, we can look to try and spread this to the minus one deviation. In my opinion, this is going to be a plus 0.5 and a minus 0.5 day. That's my opinion. And um, I'm gonna, and that's where most of the trades are gonna be done. And I can usually call it a day once we either touch one of those. Now let's just quickly move to slash TF. Chart's basically the same, so I can go quite a bit quicker with this chart. Okay, um, smack dab in the middle has plenty of room to run higher. Let's write that number down. Um, that is going to be we'll write down 51 to 53. And then of course has plenty of room to run to run right back down to these lows. 35, that's already basically, that's 12.34.8, so we'll round up. So we'll write down 36, 36 to 34, okay? And so now we look at our, our clean plot chart. Same thing as the S, we kind of have a longer term trend line here. We have a longer term triangle forming to the upside. And notice same thing as the S. Great structure, great structure, great structure, 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 structure. Almost had it touching the minus 0.5, so we got a lot of stuff going on there. We do have a lot of stuff going on on the minus one deviation. We do have quite a bit of stuff from here to here as well, up to the upside. And the number I wrote up to the upside, I wrote down 51 to 53, which will put me at that plus 0.5 deviation. And then the 15 day high tomorrow is our plus one. So it's the same thing as ZS. You just pick your favorite chart, okay? This chart now, it's a little bit different since we're not inside value. Um, let's talk about if it goes higher, okay? If we do make, if we do go higher, I can look for potential sell triggers off of these POCs, okay? We got two of them there, so we absolutely can look for our triggers. But if price gets up above POCs and then holds pullbacks there, so higher lows, higher lows, you then can look to spread this up to that trend line high and the plus 0.5 deviation and then take your profits. You get through plus 0.5, okay? Same thing as yes, get through higher lows, higher lows, up to the plus one, okay? It, same thing as yes, we will have a potential opportunity for 80% rule uh, to the downside tomorrow. So here's our 80% rule. So if price comes outside of value, which it has, and then gets back inside and you find lower highs, lower highs, one minute chart, find your entries here and here, 80% chance price is gonna go down there, touch value rate low. 
okay? So how you would play this is you first got to get back inside value area high. Then you find your lower highs. Once you get back inside, lower high, lower high, and then you got an 80% chance price will go down there and go back down to Monday's low. The number I wrote down to the downside, I did write down 36 to 34, okay? Which is not value area low, but I mentioned that because we potentially will have buy triggers off of value area low tomorrow. So let me show you that picture here from the training. We will potentially have buy triggers off of value area low, okay? Or, same thing as ES, potential buy triggers right off of that minus 0.5 deviation. And I know, I know, this is super vague, but we might even have potential buy triggers off of that trend line. I'll leave it on right now so you can kind of write it down yourself. The only way I'll look to spread to the minus one, basically my line in the sand will be that trend line. So if price gets through the trend line and then holds lower highs, lower highs, I can look to try and spread this down to the minus one deviation. So comment if you have any questions. Make sure you're recording all of your trades. Take pictures of every trade that you take and post it so that you get feedback from me and from others.